Right. You laid the groundwork for Twilight. Yes, I like to think that. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, I, now I watch Twilight or I watch True Blood, and I think this is that was us. I know that he struggled with. Um, he struggled with. I, I I always put it as his own demons. The struggle with that really had took a toll on on him. And you have people that that are looking the other way because they're making so much money off of you. I think it's tough. It's yeah, you can hurt your kidneys, but take overdoing supplements. That's what's gonna hurt your kidneys. This, for mm. example, too much creatine. Too much protein. About 25 years ago, before there was Twilight, there was Lost Boys. Today, actor Jameson Newlander is here. He stars with Corey Feldman in the new DVD release, Lost Boys The Thirst. And later in the show, fitness pro John Carter tells you how to avoid common workout injuries. But up first, Jamison Newlander. Pleasure to meet you, Jamison. Very nice to meet you, Greg. Well, I remember that movie back in the day, right? we 25 all, years ago. We were all a bit younger then. But <laughs> <laughs> indeed, a little. <laughs> you had to bring that up, did you? Sorry, I know. <laughs> but, uh, but that really, you know, that, there's such a renewed interest these days with Twilight, you know, and there's sure. all these vampire movies and shows. But you were one of the first, I mean, obviously there have been vampire movies and stories for a while, but you were kind of the first of the... Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I think uh, Hollywood has been fascinated with the vampire really probably since the beginning of Hollywood. But yeah, it's, what, I, what I feel like um, is that uh, in, back in the 80s, Lost Boys kicked off this new genre, you know, this new uh, or sort of new life in the genre. You laid the is, groundwork for Twilight. Yes, I like to think that. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, I, now I watch Twilight or I watch True Blood and I think this is, that was us. Or Buffy, you know, the vampire, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it's like... We were the vampire hunters uh, that started. Yeah, but the difference is, as you were saying the other day when we were talking, is that though in the new series they kind of glamorize vampires. Right. Yeah. But that's in your true. day, you were or are hunting them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, we were talking. Uh, Corey Feldman and I were talking about that a bit because we've been doing some press and stuff for the for the movie. So we we kind of realized this in the in the middle of it that. You know, these days the vampire is, uh, you know, is they're making them really sexy. I mean, I guess in Lost Boys they were sexy also. I mean, let's face it. But they were bad. They were bad sexy. They were the bad boys. Here, you know. Well, it's here, more politically correct. Can't we all get along? You know, we're going to be friends with the vampires. Yeah, I, I guess that's right. They I mean, don't eat it, people. They eat meat products or something, or they or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's politically a, correct vampire. It's a great new take to have a politically correct vampire. But what I like about our about our, our franchise is that. The vampires are bad, you know, and the and the good guys are good. We're, you know, uh, the 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 frog brothers, the vampire hunters. We're good, and that's what. Uh, I mean, you know, there's we we're bad too. I don't know. The, the lines blur a little bit, but that's what I like mm. about our franchise. And so you're back. So there's a third, a, a DVD now in the series, The Thirst. Yeah, Lost Boys and, and Thirst. And this just came out, right? Yeah, yeah, it just came out last uh, last week, uh, October the 12th. Hmm. And um, really excited. Uh, the fans seem to be really excited about it. The tribe was, you know, the tribe did really well actually on DVD, but some of the fans were feeling, because um, the people involved were really, I thought, really fantastic. Hmm. Um, but some of the fans felt like there wasn't enough of the elements of the first movie in the second movie. Huh. Um, well, in fact, one of those elements that was not quite in there was you, right? Because you filmed part of it, but you didn't, there was an alternate ending or... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. they, they had me on set um, the same day that Corey Haim was on set, too, mm. actually. We, were, we both, and we were kind of reliving, uh, you know, like we were doing Lost Boys again and <laughs> tried to feel like it was 1986 again. Um, and but that was a few years ago? That was Yeah, that was, uh, we shot that in 80... I mean, in uh, 2000. That was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, so, so 2007, I think, is when we, or 2000, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. But um, I can't remember. I was cut out of it. I, I blocked mm. the whole thing out. No, so, I, so they, they, I was, I came as this, uh, the, this sort of head vampire in this muscle car. They made me, tried to make me look really bad, you know, really evil and bad. And I was the head, going to be the head vampire. And, and that, they cut that out. Um, and they made that into an alternate ending, and I'm kind of glad they did because it gave us a little more freedom for the third movie to, oh. you know. So are you are you back as the head bad vampire, or would no. you come back in the sexy car, or would you come back in? Um, I, I come back in very sexy, but oh, not okay. in a sexy car. <laughs> um, I uh, I'm back. Um, I'm not the head vampire, but I do. I am a vampire at different times in this movie. Um, a vampire and not a vampire. You have to see the movie to mm. to know for sure exactly when. But um, but I do I do flirt with that with that dark side myself actually. Even though I'm a vampire hunter, so it's a little conflict going oh, on for me oh. personally. Hmm. And but this is not directed by Joel Schumacher, though. Right, it's not. No, this new one is directed by Dario Piana, who's <laughs> an Italian director, fantastic guy, really 
great director, great, great guy to work with. I mean, you know, we have special, we all have special feelings about working with Joel back in the day. That was like a really special experience. This was a whole different thing, uh, working with Dario. We, were, we shot it in South Africa, which was a oh, wow, you know, wow. far, a long way to go to. That must have been fun. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, it was great to go to South in Africa. Cape Town or? Cape Town, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Cape Town's a beautiful, beautiful town. And That's what I've heard. I've never been there, but I was here. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, the thing about Cape Town is that, you know, we, we were in a really beautiful area and, you know, they, they kept us shielded from, mm -hmm. you know, just as you get a little bit further outside of town, as, I guess with any town, there's going to be, you know, poverty or, or stuff. I think you still have remnants of, of the old South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there, there was, we, we shot, uh, one, of our, one of the scenes was near uh, a squatter village. Oh. And, yeah, and there was a lot of poverty there and I think there's still political problems that they're working out. Because I hear sometimes even they'll warn people that I think if you're in a car or driving or like, I don't know, people will cause accidents or something like that or rear-end right. you or hit you. I don't know what it's something with cars. Yeah, and I did hear about that. And, and fortunately, I didn't do any driving when I was there. I, hmm. I was really scared about that. But it, but it actually, that's more Johannesburg, I think. Oh, I said, okay. Yeah, Cape Town, I think, is a little bit safer, very touristy, uh, or maybe I shouldn't say touristy, maybe more international. Hmm. There's a real European vibe over there. And how long were you there? Uh, I was there six weeks. We, the oh. whole shoot was six weeks. Mm. That's um, not too bad. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was good. I mean, you know, I, I have a I have a two year old boy. Uh, oh, did you bring the family too? Yeah, or? I brought the whole family. Oh, wow. And you know, we were just talking. It's funny. We were just talking about like if we were to do it again, maybe we wouldn't bring. I wouldn't bring the little guy because mm. it was it made it it made it tricky because it's a twelve hour time difference. Oh. So we had just gotten him to sleep through the night and then totally, you know, inverted his sleep schedule and it took probably half the time that we were there, or maybe not half, but almost half the time that we were there to get him back sleeping again. Oh, oh. But they were good times too. We, we took, we went, there are beautiful wineries there um, just outside the city, uh, I mean, uh, you know, um, vineyards. Oh. So we went and we did wine tasting and so we didn't give any wine to, the, to, to Nathan. <laughs> not to the kid, <laughs> yeah, exactly. not to the two year old. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hmm, yeah, it's, well maybe it's legal over there, I don't know. It's, it might uh, be. We do. Went in Rome, you know. <laughs> Uh, now this is actually put out by Warner Brothers, right? Yeah, or, or Warner the, Premier, which Warner is Premier. the, it's, this, is, this went direct to DVD, uh, so um, Warner Premier is the, the sort of division that does that. And uh, yeah, I mean they talked about making it a, a theatrical release and hmm. you know, maybe here and there they might do it, but um, they stuck with the If it picks DVD. up, and is there, do you think there will be another one? Have they talked about yeah, that? Yeah, we're hoping for that. We're, um, we're really, I mean, we got to see how this one does. Mm -hmm. The good thing about The Tribe, the second movie, is that it did so well that they were really excited to do a third one. And now I think with, with the Frog Brothers returning, the fans seem to be really excited about it, and we're hoping it does as well, or better even. And, um, and then we're talking about maybe even a, another, fr another um, trilogy. Oh, or, wow. wow. Um, and then maybe even they've been talking about a television show. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I'm not representing Warner Brothers and saying, hey, there's going to be a television show, but... I'm pushing that because I like the idea. Well, mo especially Warner Brothers, a lot of them look for the franchise, you know, Lord of the Rings and all this. So yeah. if they can, look, they milk it for all it's worth these days. Harry Potter and that, you know, yeah. so if they can turn you into a franchise, I'm sure they will, you know. I love can. it. I, I would love it. Yeah. I mean, just because I, I love doing this, this role and, um, and like, you know, like we talked about uh, a few moments ago, it's like, we were there. We were there first. You know, yeah. we, we created Damn. this new era. We want to take advantage of it. You know? Take it back from Twilight. They yeah. can have you versus Twilight. Yeah. What I, do you think? See, that's what I like. Battle of the, the vampire stars or something like that. See? You know? They did Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, you know, I, it's true. They did. And that's a, that's a good point. You know, Corey Feldman's been saying this thing that I like, which is that we're, we're here to reclaim our steak. You know, steak, but the, like vampire. Yeah, you good pun. Thanks. Well, that was his pun, but. And I did want to mention too, you said that in South Africa you actually worked with the special effects crew that did uh, District 9? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were a great group of people to work with, really talented. Um, that's one of the things that I think is really fun about this movie. There's some really great special effects stuff. There's some really great um, um, stunt work that we did. I actually do a bunch of my own stuff. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Yeah, we do some, some sword fighting. The Frog Brothers, for those people who, who have, haven't been following the franchise, there was a comic book um, out with it called The Reign of Frogs, um, mm. and we started fighting with these katana swords, like the samurai swords. Oh, wow. So we do a bunch of that stuff, and a lot of the times when you're watching it, it's, it's actually me that you're seeing, because 
they, they really, I worked side by side with the stunt team and they really trained me. They're very patient, <laughs> you know, with someone who doesn't, uh, you know, who isn't. It's a nice skill person. to have, be able to handle yourself with a sword, you know? Yeah, exactly, you know, protect my family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. And we are back with Jameson Newlander from Lost Boys the Thirst. So you're a trained samurai now, right? That's yeah, exactly. Uh, now, if you, if you don't mess with <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah, yeah. This is, these are lethal weapons. These, well, the hands with the sword. Just these, you know, you don't have to worry. Oh, you don't even need the sword. That's, you know, no, I do. I don't know. And I don't. I don't you just know. need the teeth, right? If yeah, the teeth. <laughs> yeah, I have, cool, I have cool teeth in it. Yeah, too. how do they, yeah, so what is that, prosthetics, I guess? Yeah, that's a really fun, that's a really fun part of it, um, too, is that, you know, I get it measured for the teeth, you know, and I had different types of teeth for different scenes and, and stuff. That's a really fun part of it. It's exactly like going to the dentist, actually, which I hate. But, I mean, it's not, they don't drill. But they put in teeth instead yeah, of take them out. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Extra. Uh, but it just is like a um, false teeth? Yeah, or it's sort on, of like, top I of used the... to, I did this when I was a little kid. I, I had um, teeth put on, like um, veneers put on my teeth oh. when I was, like, when I was little. And I was doing commercials and they wanted my teeth to look cool and stuff, you know. So um, it's a similar kind of thing. They, uh, it's like a tooth that goes over it. Um, and then there's you wear them just for fun sometimes, or did the, you don't get to keep them? I wasn't able to keep it. Everybody said, you know, you should t you should take them, you should steal them, you know. Uh, you're, you're like in line at the supermarket, and yeah. you just kind of flash that smile, and really? like the woman beside you goes running, screaming out of the store, like. That would be great. <laughs> I thought of it, and I, sh I should have done it. I'm too good. I'm a, I'm a do-gooder. I think I'm a, hmm. I'm a rule follower. It'd be good for YouTube, though. Yeah, you're right. Um, so when you mentioned um, doing commercials and stuff as a kid yeah. back in the day, um, how did you get from there to Lost Boys, the, the original? Well, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I got really fortunate um, that, well, it sort of started because I, I actually was going to be a doctor. You know, when I was 14, I was like, ah, you know, or like when I was 10 to 14, I was like, I'm going to be a doctor and everything. So my mom said, you know, why don't we do some, why don't you do, try and do some commercials? You know, I was like a little all-American kid, you know, so she was like, do some commercials and maybe put away a little money. And I did some commercials and some... Gonna pay for medical school. Yeah, exactly. You know, put it away, you know, put it in a bond and... What, know, what kind of commercials did you do? Um, I did a commercial for Pearl Vision. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, those, yeah. those glasses. Yeah. That was really fun. And an AT&T commercial. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, you probably, people have probably saw, seen that commercial. It's like me being, um, I'm nervous to call my girlfriend, mm -hmm. and then I, I, I call, but then I'm about to hang up, and the deal is that they connect so quick. Back then, it was then. Oh, it was back then. Yeah. Back then. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Before there were story. cell phones, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We won't talk about what's happened with phones in the meantime. Right, exactly. I'm not accountable for, for that, you know. Uh, and then, but how in the but in the casting process, I think you told me though. But you and Corey kind of hit it off right away. Yeah, Corey that was a really cool thing, actually. Is that my my agent kind of schmoozed me into the into the callback. It was oh yeah, because you told me because you weren't even yeah, I wasn't in the original call, original audition. And then I think that they sort of like faked it. I think my agent sort of lied and said. Yeah, that you I was remember him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you said you wanted to call him back or whatever. So I somehow got into the callback, and I um. And there, wait, in the waiting room, was Corey Feldman, who I right. recognized from some movies. Um, you know, Goonies, I think, was recent. Oh. Was, was his most recent. And, uh, and so there we were, and we were talking, and, and we had a kind of a chemistry at the, at, you know, from the beginning. You know, we, he, we were from like to two different worlds. You know, he's this actor who's you know, done all these movies, and I'm this sort of regular kid who's done a, little, a few things here and there. But we started talking, and we hit it off, and we went into the room um, and met Joel Schumacher mm -hmm. and the um, casting director, and we had this really cool energy, and we and they really loved us together, and of course he got it right away. He got the part right away because you know he was Corey Feldman and he was awesome, and um, I they were nervous about me because I hadn't done anything that big. Before. The newcomer. Yeah, exactly. Or you know, you know so they were like comparative newcomer, exactly, and so they went off to New York and they 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 did all sorts of casting sessions around the country. And they didn't find anybody that they that they loved, and they they kind of came back to L.A. and they had a, a kind of a meeting with Feldman and with Joel and the casting director, and they said, you know, Corey, you know, what about you? What do you think? And at least this is how Corey tells it. Oh. <laughs> but and and uh, he said, I, I really like Jamie. They called me Jamie back then. Hmm. It, was, it was cute. And uh, so we, they they had me in again, and there it was. Huh? The rest is history. 
Brock. He, he takes credit. He cast you. Yeah, he does. He does take, <laughs> take that credit. He's been really supportive, actually. Corey, even you know, with this movie too, he's been really supportive, trying to get the frogs back together again. So you two have stayed in touch. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we've we've, we've made, remained friends over the year. There were over the years. There was a little period of time where I was off in New York. I after the movie, I, um, I you know, when the movie came out. I was 17 already, so I was already planning to go to college. I went to New York, um, studied uh, theater at NYU. Oh. And that, that period of time, we weren't in touch. I was all Mr. New York actor man, you know. And, um, and then, but not too long after that, we got back in touch and you know, sort of talked here and there, and then went to a party of his. He, he plays poker. Um, he has a poker game at his place from time to time. And hmm. Played some poker, and they, I won. I happened to win. Oh. You know? <laughs> So you're good at cards? Better. I'm not, actually. I'm oh. terrible. Terrible poker player. But he's but worse, so. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're terrible. No, some of them know, but you know, sometimes it's luck. You know. Do you gamble? Go uh, to Vegas? I, I do like to gamble, but I'm, I, I hate to lose, so I don't really gamble very much. Mm. Craps, I actually love the game of craps. Oh. You know. Well, um, sorry, we're running low on time, but I did want to mention, of course, you know, the other Corey. Um, yeah, yeah, Corey Haim. And so what do you make of that situation? Um, I, I was watching some interviews actually that Corey Feldman gave at the, um, you know, at the time of his death saying that he thought that it was accidental or, well, what do you, what do you make of the situation? You hear so much yeah. these days about prescription drugs and overdoses and, yeah. and whatever. Yeah, I think that, um, I, th I think the official word was that it wasn't an overdose. Um, I know that he struggled with, um, he struggled with, I, I, I always put it as his own demons. You know, it's like a kind of a politically correct way of doing it. I know that he struggled with this. So issue. even in the first movie, you noticed it back then. You know, I didn't you? know. I didn't notice it at all back then. I was I was a kind of a naive kid, and I didn't think I didn't know they were doing. I, I don't think I don't, actually don't think at the time they were really doing lots of drugs. Hmm. Um, I think the other vampires were, you know, the, the older kids maybe oh. were. <laughs> but I was, again, I was so naive. Those I, vampires are pretty wild. Uh. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, those guys were, they, they were the cool kids and the bad kids and everything like that. But I thought we were the good, you know, kind of the good kids. And so I didn't really see it firsthand. And then, um, you know, I, I, I saw Corey struggle with that. I sh saw Corey Haim struggle with that stuff. And, um, you know, I... I think I don't. I don't think that's what that was. I don't think it was an overdose, um, but but I, I do think that the struggle with that really had took a toll on on him. You know, I think it's difficult. You know, people have been asking me this kind of thing a lot because of you know what just happened when he just uh, died, um, and it's it's tough to be a, a kid actor, especially yeah. someone like Corey Haim who is so talented and so part of being talented. I think is he's so open and so sensitive. You know that. He just sometimes that can the, the pressures of Hollywood can just take you take you over and, and you yeah, and you hear you know the horror stories about because what at one point I mean he was really I was reading it you know the, said he was the most popular teenager in the world at one point yeah and you know, I, I buy that I remember and, I remember the magazines and you know I remember yeah when he was so popular and the Corys were so popular and the problem with that at at an age when you, when you you know when all of us are struggling with those things I mean I struggled with similar kinds of things on much, you know, smaller level, but, you know, I went to college, you know, and so, but when you're at that age and you're dealing with those issues anyway, those issues of trying to rebel and doing things that are maybe not the things that you're supposed to be doing, and then you have people that, that are looking the other way because they're making so much money off of you, I think it's tough, it's, and, I, and I think that that's probably um, part of what was going on for him. It's sad, too, though, because I, I felt like he was about to come out of it. For me, like from what I saw, mm -hmm. I felt like he was about to come out of it and about to make a, a rebound because he's a really talented guy, and I thought that, that was just, it was just a question of time before he did enough projects that people were going to say, wow, remember this kid from Lucas, remember him from Lost Boys, like we love this guy, and that maybe that would have helped. So I think it was really sad timing. Oh, I'm sorry, and I'm glad that you two are back for the new one. Thanks. Great and we'll look for Lost Boys The Thirst on DVD. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. We'll be right back. We are back. Joining me now is fitness pro John Carter. Great to have you here today, Thanks, John. Greg. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And I, I should say, I'll give a little shout out here. You're actually, you know, Greg O'Gallagher from Canada who's been on the show. Of course. Good friend of mine. We did a photo shoot together in Santa Monica. It was great. So. And you've done some workout videos together. Yeah, we did some good workout videos for our YouTube channel. 
So just to show the people how to stay healthy and get a good pump. Okay. And by the way, um, you have done the whole before and after transformation thing here. I thought we'd show this. This is you before. What, what are we looking at here? I was 135 pounds. I was 135 pounds. Right after I graduated high school. I just, so 18? I was 18 years old at that time. And I just transformed my pounds. body. Completely. And this is the transformation? That's me two years later. And uh, every day I was at the gym working out. I was just not fully satisfied with my physique. Uh, when I was 18, so I just decided to transform my body the right way, all natural, and just dedicated myself to it. So it just good turnouts after that. So how old are you now? I'm 21 years old. Oh, okay, so that was a year ago when that was. A year ago, yeah. So another year to work on it, and indeed, now you're doing training too, or just for yourself? No, I'm you're just, not... I'm not, not training just for myself, just okay. focusing on myself, doing some fitness modeling, and just writing some articles for magazines, doing interviews, yeah. and... Uh, so far, so good. In fact, I was looking at an interview you did on, or a column, I should say, that you did on avoiding common workout tips, yeah. which is something I wanted to talk about exactly. today. Yeah. So what are some of the common injuries that people get in the gym, and how uh, do you avoid it? Some of the common injuries is rotator cuffs mm. and overtraining. Overtraining is the most common injury because people tend to just work out every day, not giving their yeah. body enough rest. Well, there's the idea that, you know, if working out is good, the more you do, probably the better, right? Cause you exactly. Can't, but, but sometimes you can't work people out too much. over limit themselves to do two, three hours, four hours at the gym. Uh, just way too much. They got to less, the better, by just focus on technique and the right way to do it. And then muscle mass and definition is going to come sooner. The, sooner. So what, what is the right amount to time to spend in the gym? Say or, one or how do you know when I it's... I would say one or two hours at the gym is good enough. You can mix it up with some cardio some stretching and then focusing in one or two body parts and your body is just going to compense and just you'll be feeling okay. Do you not mean per, per, how, many, how many days per week then? I would say four to, five week, four to five days max okay. and take the weekends off. And is that how often, how often do you work out? I work out? out every day and oh. take my weekends off. Okay. So okay. I get, leave my body, get some rest to hit it higher the next week. But just an hour or two? But just an hour or two, no more than that. Okay. And uh, let's see also for the common injuries, uh, rotator cuff, of course, rotator you hear so much cuffs, about. Yeah, well, what is the rotator cuff? And the rotator cuff is it's a group of four muscles and tendons that wrap your back, front, and top of your shoulder. And is basically is really another common injury because people tend to just pull too hard or go too low when they're doing bench hmm. or lateral raises or shoulder presses. So it's a one injury that just you either feel it on the back, top or back of your shoulder, and uh, it tends to just go all around. It just You cannot do anything because it's just a tendon. So when you literally tear it, you but now are you tearing, are you saying you can tear it from any direction? From any or location, all? yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds pretty painful. It is. I've done it before. In the oh, you've done it before? I've done it. Is. It wasn't good. Wow. And uh, how do you recover from it? Uh, you got to do, ice it up. You got to stretch. No pulling, no, not, no, no working out for a while, just, that's all I can tell you. You just gotta uh -huh. relax and just do some therapy. And, uh, but you don't need surgery or anything no surgery, like that? No surgery, Okay. But just, so if you leave it alone so though, it'll... You, well, not a, you gotta do therapy, therapy constantly, okay. just to kinda gain the strength back. And how, sure how long does it take? At least a month or two. A month or two, okay. And so how do you avoid doing that? Uh, you gotta obviously stretch before you work out. People tend to just go in the gym and just work out and they're not, they're not getting enough stretch. They gotta do, start with light weight and then move up their weight. Just and obviously have a spot. If you don't have a spot in working out, injuries, may, injuries mm -hmm. may happen. So you gotta always make sure that you have a spotter with you just to spot you when you do shoulder presses, bench press, any other workouts you wanna do. And maybe that also ties in with overtraining or the exactly. idea of you know, overdoing it and then you, That's right. especially if you don't have a spotter. So, yep. Now you also mentioned kidneys in that article, which surprised me. I didn't really think of kidneys as yeah. something that you can actually hurt kidneys, your kidneys working out. Yeah, you can hurt your kidneys, but the take overdoing supplements, that's what's going to hurt your kidneys. This, For hmm. example, too much creatine, too much protein. Nutrition is bottom line is the most important in working out. So supplements, when you have a good meal plan, the so supplements comes in, comes in play. So just not doing so much creatine, not doing so much protein, it's going to relieve your kidneys clean and no, not overdo the... Do you use creatine? I use creatine, but I, I, I cycle it. 
one month I use creatine, one month I get off it. So I don't want my, butt, my body getting used to the amount of creatine that I take. Ah, because it's not as effective then, or? It is, but your body gets used to you taking so much creatine that it's not going to affect your workouts anymore. It's just like you're drinking coffee every day hmm. just to wake up, but it's, creatine can be bad when you overtake it so much. And what kind of, I mean, do you, do you know people or have heard of people who really have? I really haven't heard much people with their kidneys because it's such a injury that it just, you have constant pain that you can't even work out. So. Wow. And then how do you recover from that? What do you have, just stop taking? Just stop taking pro, uh, creatine and protein so much because you have constant pain pressure that you can even, you can even work, work out. So. All right. And now I know you brought the bands here today. I think you had a bit of a demonstration. Of I did. I wanted to show a workout that you could do at home, sitting down watching TV. So what you just can do. Sitting down watching this show. So just grab just the band. Just watch the show, watch the band, and just That's watch right. me do it. So basically, you're going to just place the band on both feet, shoulder presses just like that. Go up, down, up. This is going to target your shoulders, your back, your real deltoids. This isn't how you tore your work tater cuff, is it? No, this is you build your tater cuff with okay. this workout. So the amount of reps is at least 15 to 20 reps. It's not, so, it's not so heavy, but remember, if you do less weight and more reps, the definition is going to increase even more. So just focusing on technique is the best way to do it. Now, how often do you do these? I do it every day. Every oh, day. every day? Every okay. Day. So just even in the morning at home or oh, something? Morning. Or? You can do it anywhere. You can do it in the plane, at work, everywhere, because just, you just carry the band. It's easy to do it. Well, in our final minute, I did want to mention, I know you have a plan. So what, are, what is your plan for your fitness goals my, for the future? In my career, uh, right now, I'm focusing on writing more articles, hmm. helping pro people out with their fitness goals and diet and nutrition, workout plans. Of course, I want to launch my iPhone application that is going to be a workout plan. Oh, great. That you great. could do anywhere, at home, everywhere. So. That's my number yeah, one because goal. I've heard of online training, but I haven't heard people doing apps, so yeah. that, that's really progressive. So you can do, it's going to target all of your body, apps, legs, shoulders, everything. So it's all in one. All right. Well, thank you very much, thank John you me, Carter, a Fitness Pro. Look for his iPhone app. And I'd also like to thank Jameson Newlander from Lost Boys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.